Welcome to this Team Black Sheep Power Cube quick tip. In this quick tip, we're going to set up and configure the LEDs at the back of the craft. Now, I had to wait a little bit to set these up just because there was a very small firmware update that was needed on the Power Cube for the LEDs to work properly. Because one of the things that the TBS guys are working on is having the LEDs at the back being able to show the FPV video channel that's being used. Now, for most of us that have already used Clean Flight, we know that you can add WS2812 individually addressable LEDs to a board and configure it through that board as well. And we're going to do that in here. So if you want to watch the video about updating the firmware, then you can watch it here. You need to make sure that that firmware has been updated before you attempt this. And then plugging the LEDs physically into the power cube is really straightforward. Here at the back of the board, there's a connector called LED and you get a little cable with it. And all you need to do is to connect those cable wires to the first WS2812 LED strip. Now the way the LED strips work, you can address up to 32 individual LEDs and you can get them in lots of different types. We just happen to have a stick of them here, which has eight LEDs. You can get them in circles. You can get them as individual LEDs that you can then place out on the corners. And there are then there are two things you need to do. First is tell Clean Flight where they're physically located on the craft. And then you can tell Clean Flight how they're actually configured. And once you click save, then it'll all work. So let's jump into Clean Flight, connect this up to the computer, make sure it's all happy, and then we'll go and configure the LEDs. So here we are looking at the Power Cube with the latest version of the firmware on it. And as we can see, if I move the Power Cube, then it's moving on the screen as well. Great. Okay, that all looks really good. Now we need to set up the LEDs. Now the LEDs will appear white if they're unconfigured. So if I just turn on my radio, and then power on the power cube, that the LEDs just appear a big row of white lights. So what we need to do is we need to configure these. The next thing we do then is go into LED strip. We need to clear all, make sure that we have a completely clear board. And again, this is looking from the top down onto the model. So here's the nose of the craft, here's the end of each of the arms, and here's the back. And you need to, first of all, tell Clean Flight where the LEDs are. So we're going to go into wire ordering mode, and we're going to click the eight along here. It'll start at LED zero. So there is our LEDs. Okay, so now we've done that. So we'll come out of wire ordering mode by clicking it again. And this time we're going to set the colors. So we'll set the ends to be a color. Let's have them as red. We'll set the next one on to be something like an indicator. They're quite fun. We'll set the next ones to be red as get as well, because I kind of like a lot of red at the back. That helps me differentiate which is the front, which is the back. And we'll do arm state for the middle two. Now, what we'll do then is we'll save that to the board and there are the LEDs changed. So we have the reds on the outside, we have the arm state in the middle. If I arm the board, the arm state goes to blue and it goes back to green. And then as I go and move my sticks left and right, I get my changes too. So now we have the LEDs at the back set we can fly it around. So it's exactly the same on this as any other board running clean flight. So that's all there is to it. The very straightforward, exactly the same as you do on any clean flight capable board. Just plug the LEDs into the LED port at the top, make sure that it's all wired up. When you first power it up, it will be all white and that means that the power's connected properly, which is good. But once you configure it, it'll look like that. So hopefully that helps those of you that are struggling with this. The big tip of course is make sure you've updated that firmware. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and happy flying.